What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. What an amazing day we had today in the market with obviously a 10.5% breakout, breakout day today from GameStop that looked absolutely amazing today on the chart. Technically speaking, we have not seen this level of resistance break. We haven't like, done the daily candle close over this resistance level here since all the way back in, ju in June, if not early May. Now, in yesterday's video that I put on the channel, this is the reason why I was saying I could see several different DGEN type trades being very successful sometime soon because once this level does crack and we finally got that crack today we could end up seeing a significant move towards the upside that could have the options chain looking crazy now i know what you're thinking right now there may be some fomo this could go up one day down the next yes it is the market there's nothing that's 100 percent this market but i will say we have been pretty good with technically setting ourselves up to be successful when these moves do happen for those of you guys who trade with me for those of you guys from the discord you guys know for those of you guys who jumped into the discord after yesterday's video congratulations because today we had an absolutely amazing day today and we were able to capture some exposure for these moves the trades that we took today in the market were games of calls that were up over 57 percent near end of day tesla calls we swung over from friday we had and they, they swung over from friday every single one of those calls were red at open we had to manage those trades today but we had 29 percent 24 percent and a 13 percent win off of those names 300 dollars calls for this week next week and the week following that we had some another coin play as well that was up over 30 i think 33 percent the high today and then we have called for cgc that we're still holding to right now those didn't work out so well at this time but we still have more time in the week and those calls are for november 15th so there's lots of time on those contracts we want to be very safe in this market all right so anyways guys if you have not yet smash the like button engage the video if you're new here subscribe to the channel so you guys get updates for videos like this monday through friday or on the team my live channel when i go live monday through friday as well let's get to this update because i do think that there is a very 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 important breakdown coming in this video for gamestop now before we get into this one specific name here, guys, I do want to give a, a very quick market update. We are in the midst of earnings season where we have the biggest names reporting earnings this week. And I want to go over what this means for the market. OK, so uh, just a quick reminder, guys, if you are looking for more information on trading in the Discord link in the description below, there is a month free trial going on right now that will be closed at the end of this week. It was closed yesterday. It was closed on Saturday. Uh, I thought there were spots available. There were not. My apologies. You can look today. They are open again at the end of the week. They will be closed. All right. Here we go for this, this weekly breakdown with what this earnings season, specifically this week, means for the market. This is the busiest week of the earnings season with about a third of the S&P 500 companies reporting. Five of the magnificent cut, seven companies also on deck this week. For more on the markets and the earnings season, we want to bring in Kara Murphy. She is Chief Investment Officer at Kestra Investment Management. And Kara, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Uh, I guess so far, so good is what we would say about things <laughs> this, at this Before she gets into that, guys, five of the top Meg 7 names reporting this week. 30% plus of the S&P 500 reporting earnings this week. The market is going to shift if we see these names shift in the after hours. So if you're going to swing anything overnight, Please be aware of that. Please be safe. Please manage your accounts accordingly. Here we go. Pretty much. I mean, this week will be the Magnificent Seven show, right? With five of the seven reporting, it'll be extraordinarily important. Collectively, those seven names are expected to grow earnings by about 18% year over year. I mean, that's an extraordinary rate given the incredible earnings growth that they've seen. But these names have to show up, they have to represent, and they have to get people excited about moving forward, right? It's not just about this quarter, it's about what happens into 2025. When you look at everybody else, though, you know, the, the 490 plus are expected to have flat earnings this year. So these guys just have to come and they have to not blow it. <laughs> if one or two of them misses, I mean, that could really drag down the averages because they make such a big portion, make up such a big portion of the averages. At this Absolutely. Point. I mean, that's the risk of having this very concentrated market, not just in terms of market cap, but also in terms of earnings power. So anyone can really kind of muck up the party for sure. You say that there is a bit of a shift that's taking place, though. Um, if you look at this quarter and maybe into next quarter, what's happening beneath the surface? Well, it, it's pretty incredible in that you continue to see Magnificent Seven with this great earnings power going into 2025, but still not as great as what we've seen in the past. And at the same time, you have the rest of the market that, that will start to accelerate earnings. I mentioned that they have flat earnings this year, probably this quarter. Into next year, we start to see double digit earnings. So there's this big shift and there has to be this handoff from the guys who have led us here 
and to what happens next year. Is that likely to happen? I mean, I know you like mid caps overall, but if you look at small caps, I mean, that's been an issue for a couple of years at this point. 100%. So, so this has to be about the Fed navigating this kind of like soft landing or no landing. We need a more favorable interest rate environment to allow a lot of these firms to see their, that earnings power is really pull through. But it's a bit of a fine line in order to get there. Small caps, I think, is where you start to get a little bit more risky, where those folks are much more sort of susceptible to the macro environment. Mid caps, you're a little bit more protected with more solid, more mature businesses. Okay, small to mid caps, let's keep this part in mind, a little bit more risky right now, which means you can see a significant downside if things do not go well. On the contrary, if things do go well, you can also see a significant upside. Makes much more of a of a wide range of reaction that we can see here from earnings season with those small mid cap names. Let's keep it going here. I've also just heard people talk about how if for smaller businesses, it's a lot tougher to get loans that are reflective of what the Fed's doing right now. You're, they're still looking at very high rates for things. It's true. And, and even when you look at the Fed interest rate cuts that we've had so far, it's only 50 basis points. So we're still well above what many of these companies had gotten used to a bunch of years ago. So it will take time for that to really filter through. And if the Fed does not continue to cut rates? Eh, that will be less of a tailwind for these smaller companies. Again, why we prefer kind of smaller end of large cap into mid cap. These are folks that are not as reliant as those interest rates coming in. They simply need a decent operating environment in order to grow earnings. What about the bond market when you look at debt? How do you feel about the, that situation? So there, when, when you look out to high yield, that's an area where we don't feel great about. You know, you're well out onto the risk curve. Um, as you said, like there's some tailwind from lower interest rates. But when you look at spreads, those are among the lowest that we've seen historically. So as you go more into corporate, mm -hmm. that's where we're a bit more comfortable. Again, more mature businesses, uh, spreads aren't quite as tight, and so we're more comfortable in that area. It's been a pretty phenomenal year watching the market. Um, you think we'll get the post-election bounce we typically get? We're a little less excited about a post-election bounce. I mean, part of it is just looking at how extraordinarily well the S&P has done overall heading into this period. Volatility has been, even though higher lately, has been relatively low for an election year. And I think we might have pulled forward some of those gains heading into the latter part of the year. All right, guys. So that is some great information there and some good stuff just to have a, a you know, solid understanding of as you head towards earnings season. But let's get down to the crux of it right now, okay? Right now, looking at this breakout here from GameStop. Actually, you know what? Before we get into that, guys, really quickly, I have to make sure I get to this update. If you haven't yet, smash the like button, engage the video. Bitcoin holding strong above this 66,500 level. I absolutely love that. I highlighted this level for you guys a few weeks back. This, to me, is a make or break level when it came down to me being bullish or bearish on Bitcoin after the breakout. We saw a move back above this uh, two weeks ago on October 15th. We came back down, retested it. We had some wicks below. It kind of you know shook some people out, but daily candles closed above it. Even if this was in a a stock market name it would look very strong here because you do uh, you know highlight where the new floor is and now we're starting to see a push here today we saw a day high of 69,865 for those of you guys who follow the Bay Street Bulls account on X I had posted on this account earlier on uh, yesterday or sorry earlier on yesterday last night looking for 70k and a breakout here and this was uh, yesterday at what time this was yesterday at 2.56 p.m. So we are roughly exactly 24 hours from there, and we missed 70K by just uh, $264 so far. All right, we are, we are almost there. That being said, look strong here. SPY, I did tell you guys that I was looking for something to hold above that 580 level. Today, SPY closed at 580, uh, 580.83. We are very close to breaking down here on SPY. Below 578, I am short-term bearish on SPY. It's just not gonna be holding up as well. To me, this look is not the best. This look here is not the best, okay? I, I, I've i seen a stronger look on the SPY several times before. If we do see SPY back above 584, I'd be bullish on that name there. If we see SPY back down below 574, it gets really scary because it can it can you know move down towards 565, 561 in, in a couple days or so. All right, so keep these keep these levels in mind here as we head towards back half of the week. But now back to GameStop, okay? So today we saw a breakout over a key level of resistance. In a previous video, um, that I gave you guys, I think it was a week and a half ago. I drew this out for you guys, and that's why this level is here. I drew this out for you guys, a breakup, a pullback down to retest, and then a move here. This is what I, I would ideally be looking at. So tomorrow, I can imagine tomorrow we do see some sort of you know early morning or pre-market run here. 
if we cannot break over $24 early in the morning, I could see GameStop pulling back down to retest this 22 to 2175 range there as support. If that support holds, in my opinion here, it will be a very bullish thing. It would be the equivalent of Bitcoin breaking over here, pulling back down to retest the level of, of resistance, now treating as a level of support, and then seeing that continuation of the upside move, okay? That's what we're looking at here. We can actually watch Bitcoin hit 70,000 here very very soon. The day high is uh, 69,865. It's currently just 65, 60, 55 bucks below that. So it's pretty close here. We can actually see this thing break up towards 70,000 in this video, which is actually pretty amazing here. Anyways, we'll go back to GameStop really quickly. So this is the kind of move here that I was looking for, and this was before the breakout. This was not after the breakout. This was a planned move before the breakout to me that made the most sense. So if we do see a pullback here, guys, do not be shocked by that. Hopefully it doesn't, you know, shake people out. Hopefully it doesn't scare people. To me, that would be a healthy pullback. That would be a solid level to slowly start to give yourself a little bit of exposure to, if you see, if you feel so fit, to then capitalize back on the upside. Now, if we don't see a healthy pullback, if we see a gap up, somewhere around this $23 range here and go. That is the most bullish kind of daily candle you could possibly see for GameStop. And if that was the case, I would not be adding on to my position here. I would simply just be riding those calls out, maybe looking at a different strike, but currently I'm holding $24 calls for uh, November 15th. And those calls are up roughly 50 to 60% at this time. I think 57% is the exact percentage at close, um, but we know how that goes. It's not going to be, no matter what happens, it's not going to open up exactly at 57% tomorrow, right? So that's what I'm looking at right now. I, I I do think that, you know, with this kind of setup here, um, a move back up towards $30, $33 to me is technically available. Like, it's, we are in a in a window of strength with this chart. The market can be in a window of weakness until we head towards the election. But I like this look right now. Now, looking at the flow, I want to give you guys as much information as possible here, okay? Going to the flow for GameStop. Here's some of the things that I noticed, okay? So, for one, you have calls coming in here all day. Overall net premium up over $5 million today, which is a, a pretty significant level of premium, net premium for GameStop. Some of the calls I think are worthwhile watching. Let's get into this so, I, so we can kind of, you know, follow whatever trades we feel so fit following, okay? Um, and just, let me just get this premium up here so we can see where the big money is. Actually, you know what? Let me just go to 20,000 and really highlight where the big money is, okay? Um, June 25th, June 20th, 2025, there's around $24,000 worth of calls that came in there. We also saw somebody had 20, uh, somebody had November 1st, this Friday, $20 calls, $33,000 placed on those calls today. And that was at 11 a.m. When I told you guys in yesterday's video that I could see more DGEN trades coming, which one of you guys did this? Which one of you guys got into $33,000 calls today. I'm going to, listen, if that's you, um, just be safe, okay? You probably made yourself a snap ton of money today. Please be safe. Um, actually, actually, you might have sold here. You might have made yourself $15,000 in sold here. 1110 and then 1113. There's no way you sold in three minutes. Hold on a second. So that's interesting. It's possible that somebody could have bought themselves thirty-three thousand dollars worth of calls at ten forty-five. Because maybe unusual whales registered a bit late and then sold it here, and that's why you had that pullback. <laughs> this could be. I'm going to analyze this a little bit more after the video is done just so I can uh, uh, take a look to see what happened there. But this is very interesting. Anyways, besides that, guys, I'm going to you know skip over to the, to the net bullish premium here. You can see at the end of the day here, calls just continue to pile in at the end of the day here. That early morning action is interesting. We'll, we'll get back to that in the next video. Um, but the way that calls finish on the day, to me, this name is still looking for more. Okay, so be very safe here, guys. It is early season. Uh, it looks like it finished, had a strong finish here. It didn't look like calls were dumping off at, at close, like someone was just trying to make their money, take their money, and leave. Um, but I will be monitoring this at open. If you guys want updates on the flow and the chart intraday 
on X, go follow the Bay Street Bull Finance account. That's where a lot of the updates will be posted. All right, guys. If you haven't yet, of course, smash the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you want more information on training, guys, link in the description below for a month free trial in the Discord. Jump in there while you still can and uh, enjoy yourselves. All right. It's early season. Have some fun. Enjoy your evening. Much love, guys. Deuces.